Uh, somebody says uh, Ayn Rand was a workaholic. I hate that term. I don't know what a workaholic is. I, I don't think anybody's. I, I don't think anybody good is a workaholic. They're not obsessed with work. They're not addicted to work like an alcoholic is addicted to alcohol. They love their work. You don't say I'm a loveholic because I love to love. Saying somebody's a workaholic is, is an insult because it's saying that their work is a neurotic thing that they have to do, that they don't have a choice. No. Rourke, Reardon, Dagny, Ayn Rand have to work. We all have to work. They recognize the importance of work. They recognize the importance of work both for their material and spiritual survival. That their life depends on it. And therefore they do it a lot. And therefore they engage in it. Therefore they focus on it. It, it's not an obsession. It's not a neurotic obsession. It's not a something you're addicted to. Yeah, she might have taken something to keep her awake because she was on a roll in a productive process. That's not addicted to the work. And I don't think she was addicted to any medications. Don't believe everything you read about Ayn Rand. So no... Work when it's enjoyable. Work when you know it's important. Work when you attain its value to your own life. Work when you know the value it pertains to you is something you relish and you do a lot of, not because you're addicted to it, but because you see its value. It's because you choose to do it. Alexander asks, what about productivity itself? I often find myself wishing I could accomplish more in a given day. While some days I exceed my expectations, my friends say I'm a workaholic. Again, I, I hate that term. You should stop using the term. You are trying to be more productive. And, and productivity is a virtue because getting more done with less time, getting more done with fewer resources is an improvement, is a move towards more life, towards what is more life? More time. So increasing productivity itself is productive. Is productive. And therefore should be engaged in. And, and you know, I, I, I recommend you, you figure out ways to become more productive. You read up. You, you gain knowledge that will help you be more productive so that you can engage in the virtue of productiveness. Productiveness is not just doing your work, the virtue of productiveness, not just doing your work, ignoring the quality or never focusing on how to improve it, how to do it better, how to become better at something, just doing it because that's how you've always done it. That's the opposite of the virtue of productiveness. The virtue of productiveness requires you to make the effort to become more productive so you can buy more time, so you can get better at what you do. Yeah, the fact that you're pursuing being more productive is a virtue. It's something to be complimented on, not something to be, he's a workaholic. I mean, that's an awful, awful term. Right. Now, what about you know, work-life balance. Everybody talks about work-life balance. Yeah, I mean, you can't work all the time. It's too exhausting. And there are other important aspects of life. Love, romantic love, sex, friendship, art, just pleasure and entertainment. All of those are important. And one has to balance them out. And there are different points in the career where they have a different balance. You know, if you're trying to break into investment banking and you're 24 years old, you better be ready to work 100 hour weeks. You do the math. There are not that many more hours in a week than 100. You don't sleep much. You work every day. 
You put everything else aside and you work. That's not a workaholic. That's somebody who's ambitious and trying to make it in a very competitive, difficult field. But at some point, if you're a partner at Goldman Sachs or, or you're a partner in a venture capital firm or everything, you're still going to work hard, but you're not going to do 100 hours a week. You're going to spend time with your family. You're going to go to a concert. You're going to listen to music. You're going to, you also have now the wealth that allows you the convenience to do all the things that you want to do. So um, it depends on when, right? When in your career cycle, when in your life cycle. But the idea that you should either ignore all these other values because, oh, this is my central value is wrong. You need to find a balance. And each one of us will find a balance el- uh, you know, differently. But the culture is pushing. American culture is a little different. But most culture pushes you that work is not that important. It's something that has to get done. But don't take it too seriously. And you're a workaholic if you do too much of it. Whereas objectivism is telling you, no, it is your central purpose. You should do what you need to do in order to achieve your values in your work. But don't forget that you have other needs. And cultivate those needs in the context of your work. And when, when. You need them. So in different phases of your career, in different phases in life, in different times of life, you're going to need different things. And be aware of that. Be introspective. Be self-conscious about all of that. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.